Welcome to absolute and conditional convergence. So uh, I mentioned absolute convergence at the end of uh, part three. Um, so here, let's get into what is absolute convergence. So a series, the sum from n equals one to infinity of a sub n, is said to converge absolutely if the series sum equals or n equals one to infinity of the absolute value of the a sub n's converges. Uh, a series is said to be converge conditionally. So a series sum from n equals one to infinity of a sub n is said to converge conditionally. If uh, the sum from n equals one to infinity of a sub n converges, but the sum from n equals one to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n diverges. So note here, we're not necessarily talking about alternating series. We're just saying that the a sub n is no longer strictly positive. And, um, we may or may not have alternating signs. Um, it may be that all a sub n's are positive, or it may be that some of them are negative, some are positive, etc. So for example, let's look at the alternating series, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times n plus two over n squared plus three n plus one, and determine whether that series converges absolutely, conditionally, or diverges. So we can start off with conditionally and then go to absolutely. So let's first look at the original series. So let's first look at the sum from n equals one to infinity of negative one to the n times m plus two over n squared plus three n plus one. So note, this is an alternating series. Um, for n large enough, uh, it is decreasing, right? Oh, I should specify, it's an alternating series. Our a sub n are all positive. So our a sub n equaling n plus two over n squared plus three n plus one are all positive. And then um, we have the a sub n are decreasing at least when n gets large. Right. When n gets large, this will just behave like 1 over n. And then uh, finally, um, we also have the limit as n goes to infinity of our a sub n's is the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 2 over n squared plus 3 n plus 1. Denominator has the larger degree. That will just go to 0. 
So we meet the requirements for an alternating, the alternating series test. So by the alternating series test, the sum from n equals one to infinity of negative one to the n times m plus two over n squared plus three n plus one converges. So we know that we have at least conditional convergence. So now we have to look at the absolute value terms. So now let's look at the sum from n equals one to infinity of the absolute value of negative one to the n times n plus two over n squared plus three n plus one. So this is just the sum from n equals one to infinity of n plus two over n squared plus three n plus one. So I know for large n, this behaves an awful lot like one over n. So let's use the limit comparison test uh, with one uh, our b sub n's being one over n. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of, up top we have n plus two over n squared plus three n plus one. Down below we have one over n. So this is the same as the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, n squared plus two n over n squared plus three n plus one. Again, that's essentially just flipping that one over at the n uh, using its reciprocal in the numerator. This limit is equal to one. So we have a finite value. Okay. So, uh, therefore, uh, since the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n divergence, we have the sum from n equals one to infinity of uh, n plus two over n squared plus three n plus one diverges. Therefore, we do not have absolute convergence. So the series does not converge absolutely. So we have the sum from n equals one to infinity of negative one to the n times n plus two over n squared plus three n plus one converges conditionally. Now that convergence is dependent on um, having some negatives involved. Right, so that is uh, conditional convergence and absolute convergence. Uh, 
From here, we will move on into some interesting theory about absolute convergence and conditional convergence.